So we've been talking about acquisition, basically how you acquire these associations, learning about the CS as predicting the outcome of the, the U.S. Second order association. So as I mentioned, you can actually learn two different CSs, one that predicts the next, which then predicts the U.S. And there's a lot of really interesting phenomena associated with extinction which is learning that the CS no longer predicts uh, a uh, US. So this is uh, very widely studied in these kinds of conditioning paradigms. You train up uh, this acquisition of the CS US association and you present the CS and then you simply stop presenting the US. And one of the most interesting results in these kinds of experiments is a lot of evidence that this is new learning that's taking place during extinction and it's not just the kind of unlearning of the prior acquisition learning. One way to think about this is that you're kind of learning exceptions to the original kind of association that was developed uh, during acquisition. So you're saying, well, you know, in general, I'm going to get this reward, but except in this one situation, this one context, or well, maybe that other context, I won't get it either. But in general, I still think that I might have a chance of getting this reward, right? And that actually can be adaptive because if you have some experience which has led you to form that association, you know, there is some reasonable basis for thinking that that might reemerge in some other situation, um, even if you fail to experience it in some, you know, particular situations. Uh, so, you know, like food, you know, it isn't always in the same place in the natural world. Sometimes the, the grocery store is out of a particular item. That doesn't mean you want to not go there and look for it again. It just means in this particular situation, you didn't see it. There's three different phenomena with these different names that, of course, now become very attractive targets for uh, quiz questions. So you'll see these on quizzes. Spontaneous recovery refers to a uh, process where basically the uh, extinguished association just automatically by itself recovers or reemerges on its own. Um, and there's no uh, manipulation that people do. It just happens. Okay. And probably this has to do with the fact that our, our internal context, um, internal sense of time is drifting over time. And so uh, later in time, after you, you know, after your extinction has happened and now more time has passed, you have a sort of different mental context. And so that may help it kind of reemerge later. Renewal is where you do this manipulation, where you initially learn the association of the CS and the US in one context, say a blue room, and then you extinguish it in a different context B, let's call it a red room. Um, and then now you go back to the original context, say the blue room. And now all of a sudden that original association is still present there. And so again, you just learned, oh, when I'm in the red room, uh, that association between the CS and US doesn't hold, but otherwise I'm gonna still retain that association. You see this process of renewal going back into the original environment. And finally, uh, reinstatement is this process of a, just exposing the animal to the US, uh, this you know reward or shock or whatever it is that they experienced originally. And just by doing that, it, it, we think it, it, it triggers an association with the CS and sort of reactivates that CS US association all over again. And then because it hasn't been eliminated, um, then you get that kind of reactivation of the original association. And so now when you present the CS, it, it, that association with the US is reinstated. Okay, so there are a set of simple equations that describe how this classical conditioning can work. One of the most famous is something called the Rescorla Wagner learning rule. But uh, if you look beyond that kind of high level mathematical description, uh, it turns out that there's a lot of really complicated uh, neural circuitry underlying this classical conditioning phenomenon. And this is, again, something where I've done research in this area. So this is a little bit more detail than you would typically get in this for this material. Just so, again, you can sort of see the big picture here uh, that there are uh, likely different brain systems involved in learning those CS aspects of the association. We call these these learned value pathways. Okay, so these are the amygdala nuclei, the basal lateral amygdala, the central uh, amygdala, and these project right down here into these dopamine systems, the ventral tegmental area and the SNC, and those are uh, you know top-down drivers and 
how the CS is able to fire that uh, phasic dopamine response uh, when the CS comes on, that goes through these pathways. In contrast, uh, you have this uh, kind of primary value pathway, we call it, um, that goes through uh, prefrontal cortex and BS stands for ventral striatum. And these are kind of basal ganglia-like areas. This is actually in the basal ganglia. This is a, an area that's like the basal ganglia and its organization. Um, and it's really important for uh, that process of canceling out the dopamine that you would otherwise get if you have an expectation. So really the PV side of things is kind of more like the Grinch um, and the LV side of things in the amygdala is more this kind of like looking out for cues that might tell you that something good is gonna happen. And it's pretty interesting that it really, it, it seems like there's these two different brain areas that handle those two different aspects of this kind of dopamine learning. And then the, the name here, uh, if you put them the other way, PV, LV is pronounced Pavlov. So that's the kind of reason behind those, that name. Okay, in the heyday of behaviorism, you know, people thought that this form of learning, this kind of classical conditioning would explain all forms of learning. And interestingly, at that time, uh, people discovered that in fact, there are some significant limitations and things that the system is kind of biased or, or prepared to learn in certain ways that make sense, you know, in terms of basic uh, ethology, how, how anim animals behave. For example, uh, animals are very prepared to, to learn associations between different food stimuli and feelings of nausea or, or you know, indigestion or whatever. Um, and they're also prepared to learn about uh, this kind of lights and tones being associated with shock but it's hard for animals to learn about food being associated with shock or lights and tones being associated with na nausea. So there are certain kind of preferred pathways of association. And we can actually understand those in how the amygdala is wired up in these brain systems. There are certain kinds of pathways here for CS being associated with different kinds of USs that come up into the amygdala. Um, and those, those pathways are not, you know, all to all, it doesn't every, not everything can be associated with everything.